I made a wheel full of game dev challenges, yada yada yada, science, 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 let's just spin that wheel already. Alright, this one will be easy no matter what. Only one code file. In all seriousness, we recently hit 100 subscribers. I've put probably too much effort into this channel, so it means a lot to me to know that you guys enjoy my content this much. So, from me to you, I want to say, thank you. Now let's get to 1000, we can do it before Christmas, Woo! Back to Earth now. Why is making a game with only one code file such a challenge? Normally, it's not. But in Unity Game Engine, everything that wants to do something needs a script on it. This is called foreshadowing, and will prove to be a problem later. The first thing I need to do is to make the player move. So let's just put this here and, uh, wait. How do I make the player jump? Normally, when I jump in real life, I would check if the trigger collider on myself is intersecting with the ground. If it is, I add a massive force upwards to jump. Now do you see the problem with this in my game? Now get ready to take notes, because this one's a little tricky to see. To check if a collider on an object is intersecting with the ground, you need code on that object to check it. I already have a code file over here. To check if I can jump, I would need a second code file over here. What was I gonna do now that I had met a slight inconvenience? Was it even possible to make this game? Why did you make me do this? I'm doing this so I can watch every game I've ever made die. Think, Astro. My content will outlast every fragile, insignificant challenge you put me through. I'll live long enough to see this game crumble to dust and blow away. What will I have after 500 videos? Anyways, dramatic tension is overrated. To fix this, I basically drew a line from the player's feet downwards a small amount. And if it drew over the ground at all, it meant the player could jump. This is something called ray casting. For more information on this, Google how to subscribe to Astrodorf. After this whole kerfuffle, I ended the day a happy man, awaiting what adventures the next morning would bring me. Let's do art. So at this point, you're probably wondering what I'm making. Well, I'm glad you asked! I'm making a physics-based puzzle game where you have to fill in the green outline with a box. I call it Box Game. I used up my entire creative budget on my 100 subscriber special. I've got nothing left from naming low-quality games. So, to win the game, all I need to do is push this box down here. Well, that's not supposed to happen. Let's see if that works. Okay, how about now? Now. Now? Now. 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 Look at this poor soul. If only he knew that to fix this box getting stuck on walls, he just had to press one checkbox. Alright. Will this puzzle now work? I need complete and utter silence from the audience. First try. Now that I have all of my... <clears throat> Art, and some physics that finally work, it's time to make some puzzles. Welcome to Astro's Puzzle Tutorials, the one and only segment where I show you how to make a puzzle game. Let's go! The first thing you want for a puzzle is a kind of tutorial, but don't tell the player the controls because that's bad game design. We'll integrate this into the title screen. Unfortunately, the user doesn't know that gravity exists yet, so I'll make another tutorial style level where there's absolutely no way to fail if you just hold right. Now we can finally make a puzzle that isn't teaching the player something. Just kidding, how is someone supposed to know that you can stack boxes on top of each other? Let's make an entire level just dedicated to that. Alright, it's finally time to make an actual puzzle. Wait, how do I make a puzzle that's not a tutorial? Glad you asked! For this puzzle, I want the player to stack three boxes on top of each other to beat the level. To do that, I'm going to, uh... Uh, uh... 
So it turns out that making a legitimately hard puzzle is more difficult than solving it. You could say that the real puzzle game was the puzzles we made along the way. Oh, would you look at that. I spent so much time on this one puzzle that I gotta make a video now. But before we all leave, let's do one speed run to really send this game off to its death. This is, officially right now, going to be the first ever speed run of this game. Let's go. All right, first we need to start. Start the timer when we start. Someone get a timer. Let's begin this speed run. As soon as I push the box into the start, the timer starts. Ready? I found the problem. And you know what that means. It's time for us to do a speed run. Let's go, let's go. The speed run you've all been waiting for. Start your clocks as soon as this block clock is over. Ready to time? Here we go. Just push that down off. Oh. I was setting up a glitch for later. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I made this game. All right. Push that box down. Oh, that's a reset. It's a time loss. Go back up. All right, throw that down. Oh, uh, here we go. And on to level three, last level. Uh, we need to push this box down here. Okay. Oh, no, no. Ah! Over that way. We need to push this box back. Here we go. All right, I need this box now. And go over. And that's time! Once again, I remain victorious in creating games no one asked for. And just in case you didn't believe me when I said I'd make this with only one code file, here's all of the code for this one game. I also genuinely want to thank you all again for the 100 subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. Lastly, huh? What? What do you want? Epic beat my time by what? <laughs>